welcome to episode number 16 of an Italian knitting podcast. My name is Francesca. I am an Italian knitter. I'm also a software engineer and I live in the northeast of Italy with my husband, our two and a half years old daughter and our cat. If you're watching this during the holiday season, happy holidays. I hope you're having a very relaxing time. I think Christmas and the winter holiday season for me has always been super relaxing. I come from a pretty like small family. I don't have tons of, of cousins and extended family. So it's always been like super cozy, small gatherings and cozy time of the year for me. Very relaxing. This year with a toddler is not as relaxing, I want to say, but it's still a time for recharging and taking slow, doing a few things that I didn't have time to do over the year or that I regularly don't have time to do, like lots of knitting or maybe putting things away and making things look polished, put together in my office. So it has been pretty good. I still have a good amount of days off work, which I'm taking advantage of and I hope to do more knitting. That said, Let's start. I have for you a couple of finished objects, few works in progress, and a good amount of acquisitions. I think the acquisitions you'll see just sprinkled throughout the video, and I hope that's okay for you. The first finished object is the one I'm wearing. This is the Monday sweater by Petit Knit. This is a pretty modified slash altered version in the sense that if you remember last episode, I had done a good amount of actually everything almost like sleeves and the body. However, I noticed that the size I chose to follow gave me like very, very deep underarm length. And I think like it, it came down quite far. It looked like a poncho style sweater which wasn't the look I was going for. And also I feel like when you have very deep underarm sweater, it kind of comes up with you. As soon as like you put your arms up, everything comes up with you and it's not super like usable on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I did is I frogged a good amount, which was slightly painful, but not really. Painful in the knitting sense, I guess and I split again at a point that I arbitrarily arbitrarily chose after putting the sweater on. I was like, okay, I think it's time to split now. And I went with my gut feeling. So after splitting, I didn't follow the pattern anymore in terms of stitch count or measurements. So I just continued to knit the body straight and I did the sleeves with the decreases that were recommended in the pattern. I did not end up like counting how many stitches I had, but like based on the final measurements, I think this come up to be, I think like a smaller size than what I picked. So I started with size S and I think looking at the measurements of what I came up with, I think I would have got the same look with a size extra small. Don't quote me on that. I think this fits me much better. I do like it a lot more. I'm aware this is not the intended look, I think, or the intended ease that the pattern was going for because this pattern, the Monday sweater by Petit Knit, is quite an oversized sweater. And so I think it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like it's supposed to look. The underarm, I think it's perfect now. And this time around, I was a very good knitter, a good student and I did a tubular bind off on the sleeves and the body. The difference is that I actually did the two rows of double knitting, is that how it's called? Like those two preparation rows that some patterns recommend before doing the Italian or tubular bind off. And what those two rows actually did, they kind of, I think, help with flaring. So they kind of cinch in everything, not cinch in, I don't know, they make everything look better and more polished so that when you do the sewn bind off, it looks very professional. I did the same on the body. I don't know if it actually looks professional, but for me, compared to a lot of other bind offs that I tried, 
this looks pretty good and this was my actual like Christmas day sweater I find it quite festive because the color is so green and luscious and reminds me of an actual Christmas tree like the pine tree even though it doesn't have like actual color work or doesn't scream Christmas but for me it does remind me of like Christmas time the yarn that I used is Nocciole by Le Wolle and this is the softest yarn that I think I've used this year even is it true? Um, I have collected my items that I knit over the course of this past year in order to make a video going through them so I'm looking at them I don't think there's anything as soft as this one and I'm so 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 interested to see if it will peel a lot over time I think it might be worth it though <laughs> I think when you're working with a very soft yarn that feels very good on your skin, the downside most times is having to remove fluff. I would be okay with it, but I'm interested to see at what degree I'll have to do it, if every time or, I don't know, a couple of times a year. Compared to your regular raglan, maybe the No Frills sweater by Petit Knit, the Monday sweater has a folded collar. It has a little bit of a wider raglan line is that how you call it i think most raglan sweaters are one stitch raglan so that you have a central stitch and then you increase on the sides but this pattern actually has a little bit more than one stitch in the middle here so that the line comes out a little bit thicker as i mentioned the fit of the pattern is a little bit more oversized i think than other raglan sweaters or the no frills sweater in particular the yarn that i used came out to be 44 euros which i think it's a very reasonable amount of money for me to spend on a super like lusciously feeling sweater i think I, next time i would go for maybe like an extra bowl of yarn just to be sure that i have room to make sleeves longer if I want to or the body a little bit longer because as you can see I mean it's not cropped but it is a little bit um, on the short side I usually just tuck sweaters in and so I think it actually makes sense to have slightly shorter sweaters if you know that you're gonna tuck them in your pants so that you have less fabric to tuck in so I think it worked out so yeah to wrap up my thoughts on this pattern I didn't love it because of the experience of having to frog and do my own thing i think the problem was that i didn't read the fine print on the pattern in the sense that i didn't read how much positive ease was built in into the pattern and i think i'm learning about myself that i'm gravitating towards not fitted garments because that's not what this is this is not actually fitted to my body but like I'm gravitating towards less positive ease than what I loved over the past few months and years. So we'll see where my journey brings me, what types of garments and how much ease they'll have in the next months. And my second finished object for today is my <laughs> in the dark wrap. This is a wrap that does not have an official pattern it is garter stitch knitted flat so it's just knit 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 which is perfect for me when i am in the dark in my daughter's bedroom while she's falling asleep and i just want to be able to do something with my hands while i talk to her or while i just wait for her to fall asleep and so i couldn't actually knit on anything more complicated I think body of sweaters is a good project that I can do in a dark bedroom. However, I really wanted a dedicated project where I knew for sure that in every place of the project I could knit in the dark. Because for like sweaters, I cannot do the raglan increases in the dark or the sleeve decreases. So I envisioned this to be worn in a couple of different ways. I think just wrapped on my shoulders not draped on my shoulders that's what i meant uh, so kind of draped and maybe kind of have the extra fabric on my lap and kind of me working at my desk on my laptop i think this is the way i envision this to work however why not 
not. <laughs> I'm trying to find more ways to wear this. I was also thinking just folding in half and make it into a scarf. This could be kind of like a scarf. And I think I could just use it as a regular blanket if I just fold it in half maybe and place it on my lap this way. It is very, very soft. The yarn is Drops Puna, which is 100% alpaca. I talked about this before, but I was a little bit apprehensive to use this yarn in a garment because I've heard that alpaca stretches and relaxes and it's very soft, but it might not kind of keep the shape of a sweater as much as you would like. And so I think it's perfect for accessories or things that you are gonna wear close to your neck. I don't know, it feels also quite warm. And I think it's perfect for a blanket slash wrap slash scarf. I used 10 balls of this yarn and it came out to be 18.50 euros. So almost 19 euros, which I was pretty happy with. It is a good sized wrap. It is more or less two meters, so it's taller than me, and it's quite wide as well. The measurements are actually inspired by a free pattern from Pearl Soho. I didn't completely eyeball it. I actually kind of tried to make it into measurements that are quite standard for a wrap. This is the type of person I am, unfortunately. I cannot just like completely like go with it and see where the flow takes me. I actually liked to have a pattern that I could take inspiration from in terms of knowing more or less what's a good width and what could be a good length for a wrap. And so they gave me confidence that I was going in the right direction. I like to take inspiration from something even when I'm doing like a different gauge or putting my own spin on a pattern. I, I do like to have a base to work off of. That's it. So this is my second finished object for today. I would love to use uh, Drops Puna again. I think the color range is quite muted and naturals. So it would be very easy for me to find colors that I like. I don't know what I would do with them. Probably a blanket would be very squishy and comfortable and enjoyable to knit for me. Not sure if I want a hat, like I think winter accessories could work very well. So I'll see if my local yarn store has some more drop spoona in different colors. I also finished another accessory. I don't have it with me because it was a gift knit for my daughter. And so she's actually wearing it. She's at my parents' house today. I will insert a video or pictures for you here. I didn't know if I wanted to mention this because it is a small accessory for a toddler. I'm not sure how many of you are interested in those type of knits. However, I found that the pattern I followed was brilliant. It is a free pattern. The scarf is in gutter stitch. So you knit every row. This is knitted flat gutter stitch. So you go back and forth. And you start from a point of the scarf, you increase, then you knit flat for how long you want, and then you start decreasing towards the other point of the scarf at the other end. And you attach pom-poms if you'd like. I think for kids and toddlers, those are super adorable. I don't know if I would personally wear pom-poms at the end of my scarf. I don't know, I maybe in a muted color, very natural. My daughter loves pom-poms, so it wasn't even a question for me. I actually looked for scarves with pom-poms. That was the keyword in my search in Ravelry, which then led me to find this pattern. So anyway, what I find brilliant is that since you start from a point and you increase, you can actually just look at the width of the scarf that you have currently and see, okay, is this a good width? or do I want to increase more? And you can just stop increasing whatever you feel like you have a good width, and then you just knit straight forever and ever, and then you do the reverse. So you do the decreases at the end. And I think this is brilliant because you don't have to just cast on hmm, like 30 stitches. Like you don't have to gauge swatch, you don't have to guess the amount of stitches to cast on. 
at the beginning you can just cast on increase and then just look at it and you stop when you feel like you got a good width and I think what I would normally do is maybe compare the width that I got with an existing scarf and see if that matches um, however I, my daughter doesn't have an actual scarf um, I think she's been using cowls so far so I couldn't actually compare it with an existing scarf and so I actually just googled standard width for scarves for toddlers and that gave me the width that I went with for the length I think people usually recommend going with the height of the person so if you're this many centimeters tall this your scarf should be more or less the same length which I found so interesting and I've never known and I even wonder if my scarves are my height I don't I don't know if that's actually super accurate but since I, I had to pick a length for my daughter's scarf I went more or less with her height a little bit more actually because I hope she'll wear this for a couple more years at least and the yarn that I used is a fingering sock yarn from a brand with a very long name that I've forgotten and I bought this yarn when I was into sock knitting and I think a self-striping sock yarn is very very cool you just have to knit in stocking it in the round and you automatically have a complete sock which seems like you put a lot of effort into but you actually just knit in the round the yarn is from west yorkshire spinners and it's called signature for ply the ball looked like this this is the leftover so i didn't use a complete skein or a complete ball of 100 grams of finger weight. I use a little bit less. I didn't want the scarf to be too 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 long. This could be a cute headband or maybe a hat or maybe scarves for my daughter's stuffed animals, not sure. The pom-poms I made in like a solid red color which is actually I think the same brand and the same composition so it's a sock yarn and I think it goes very well together. I think I had bought this red color for the heel and the cuffs and the toes of the self-striping yarn. I think it's intentionally that they go well together. <laughs> Good job, past Francesca. The pom-poms for the scarf I made with actual pom-pom makers. Is that how they're called? the package or the box that i got at least comes with a few different sizes there's many youtube videos and written instructions as well if you want to learn how to make pom-poms with one of these and i think you do something like this you wrap your yarn around all sides you close and you cut with your scissors and you come up with a pom-pom I don't think it's necessary to have a pom-pom maker. I think you can do it with like cardboard. However, that's more labor intensive. And I think since my daughter loves pom-poms, I might get some use out of these tools. Okay, works in progress. I have a confession to make. Oof. Oh, but first of all, I have um, first acquisition of this video. This is a bag that I've been eyeing for a while. This is from Hohi & Co. This is the Hohi Locatelli brand. She is a designer, knitwear designer, but now also sells bags. I guess these are knitting project bags, but you could also, I think, use them for your day-to-day -day life and no one would notice or say anything. This is the Recoleta style in olive green. The confession that I have to make is that I realized that the dad's sweater that I showed you last time as a finished object, which is this one, I've actually noticed that while knitting on it, I skipped a few increases. So the finished object, which I love, I think this is one of my favorites that I've knitted this year. It fits me very well and very comfortably. It's not too oversized. But I did notice that I skipped a few increases. So the bust circumference of the finished garment is a little bit 
smaller than the intended pattern. And I noticed that because I went to start a new dad's sweater. I only have kind of the body more or less finished, but I didn't put the collar in or didn't start the sleeves. However, while knitting on this, I've reused the same PDF, like digital pattern on my phone that I used for my first dad's sweater. And I've noticed that I did not check off some of the increases. What I do on my phone is I usually just like tick, tick, tick whenever I do parts of the pattern and so that I know where I am. And so what I've noticed is that there was like a, a good chunk of the instructions in the pattern where I did not put checks or check marks the first time that I used the pattern. So I'm so sorry. Actually, I test knitted these patterns. So I was a very bad test knitter because I didn't increase. I mean, we're not talking about half of the sweater with missing or anything like that but there was like a good amount of increases so i am so so interested to compare the two when they're done i'm knitting the same size and so i foresee and i actually know for sure the in progress one will come up a little bit wider and since i loved the first version so much i'm actually wondering if i will like the second version as much so this will be a little bit more oversized on my body because it'll have the proper amount of increases, so more than what I did the first time around. Um, I think I will still love it, but it will be slightly more oversized. And so it'll be very, very fun to compare the two. I'll wear them side by side and we can see if we can spot the difference. The yarn that I'm using was actually gifted to me from an Italian company, a small business, which I've been eyeing for the past year. They are called Lollo Crea. They're, as I mentioned, a small business, women-led business here in Italy, and they do a lot of small batches. So uh, for the colorways that you'll find on their website, I don't think they promise to have them available for months and months. So they always recommend if there's a color you really like, just purchase the amount you need and maybe a little bit extra so that you're absolutely sure because we might not bring back the same color. So I met them at Knit Italy, which is an Italian knitting conference that I went to a few months ago and I met them there and then they reached out to me to try some of their yarns. And I loved that they also asked me what type of yarn I wanted, what colors, how much I wanted. Like it wasn't just like, okay, I'll send you this few samples and then you tell me if you like them. They were actually interested in my personal preference. They also sent me like personalized pictures in the sense that I asked them, oh, would this color go well with this other one? Will they match? And they actually took the time to send me a picture of the two yarns together so that I could see in the same picture how they looked, which I find is quite like a nice touch. I don't think many companies do that, or I guess it never happened to me that someone would go to the length of actually taking a picture for me of the yarns close by. They unfortunately, I guess I say unfortunately for me, they don't have it on like different bases the same colors. So it's not a knitting for olive situation where you have the color artichoke and you know that you have the same color in all of their bases. Here, I actually had to be a little bit creative and see, okay, let's try to do with the blue in the silky base, with the blue in the queen base and see if they would work. So you cannot be super mindless in picking colors in case you want to match two yarns together and hold them together, which is what I always like to do. But they are always so helpful in making sure that you got the right match that I guess it doesn't matter too much. So I chose the Silky base, which is their Kid Mohair and Silk. This is made in Italy. And I also chose their Queen. This is uh, Merino and Lyocell. Made in Italy. They have all the informations here. And I love that everything comes caked up. So you don't actually get... Actually get... Oops. So you don't actually get skeins that you need to wind yourself. Everything comes in cakes. For random fact, 
for the silk mohair, I tried to pull from the center and I found that it got quite tangled. I usually don't cake up my silk mohair, is that true? I think so. I think I usually either pull up the, the skeins or I think knitting for Olive, for example, they come already in bowls. I think a cake, like a center pulled cake for kid silk mohair doesn't work as well. So I just then started pulling from outside like a regular bowl. So I didn't treat this as a center pull cake of yarn. I just started using it for, from outside. I don't know why I wanted to tell you this fact. They also sent me a few other yarns, which I had a good amount. Some of them are very good amounts. I don't know what I'll make with them. I would love to have like a blanket with different stripes. Maybe I can then use some of my existing leftover yarn from bigger projects and putting everything together in a blanket because I would like to actually test out this yarn so that I can see if I would like to purchase it but I don't think I have enough to make a project maybe this could be a hat or a cowl but for smaller bowls of yarn I don't know if I can think of projects that would be standalone projects instead of just a stripe in a blanket so I'll let you know. Either way, the mohair and merino combination here is lovely. It gives me this marled, is it called marled? <laughs> marled look. So the two blues are similar, like they have the same tone. I'm just spitting out words that I don't know what they mean. I'm just trying pretending that I know what I'm talking about. But this is the same tone of blue. I don't think spectrum but you can tell that the mohair is a little bit darker and so it does kind of give you this marled look and this being the dad's sweater pattern i think this colorway fits so well i've literally seen my dad wear similar colors i think this is a very dad sweater fabric that's coming out like a marled look quite like soft blue colored so very classic I think this was a match made in heaven. The pattern is always very lovely. It's a set in sleeve pattern, meaning that you do knit flat a little bit, the back and the front piece, and you continue in the body in the round. And then for the sleeves, you pick up around the edge, you knit a little cuff here at the top with short rows, and then you continue straight. I'll talk about it more in my next episode when this will be actually finished. But if you are curious, you can also go back and listen to my short review of the pattern in the last episode. Okay, so along the same lines, there's another sweater that I started quite recently. Also along the same lines, also because it's in a new bag. This is a petite knit tote bag. Tote bags are my favorite project bags. I found they are so lightweight, they don't add any weight to your projects when you're carrying them around and the straps are very comfortable and this is a petite knit one. The color is quite dark and the downside I think it just picks up all my cat's hair and a fluff from light colored projects. I do not care but it's something that you might pay attention to and what I have here is a similar construction to the bad sweater that I mentioned before, but not quite. So I'll show you a little bit. So this is the Stockholm sweater by Petit Knit, which I found was fitting since this is in a Petit Knit bag. And the similarity here is that you knit the back flat and you knit the front flat up until you join in the round which I've done this morning earlier today with my cup of tea what you do is you pick up the sleeves here at the edge and you knit the sleeves straight you don't do like a cuff here for a shoulder area because this is a dropped shoulder construction so it actually comes over your shoulder I guess what I want to say is that this Stockholm sweater or drop shoulder construction in general, I think is a little bit easier to wrap your mind around. And I don't know about the fit, so I'll 
be very interested to compare the fit of the two. I've done a drop shoulder construction before for my Ingrid summer sweater by Gregoria Fibers and I do like the fit so I don't expect this to be uncomfortable or anything like that but I don't know. I'm, I'm very interested these days in sweater construction like the different types of shoulders. I'm interested in seeing how this will fit once it's done. The yarn I'm using is Filcolana Tilia and Aroveta. This is in the light truffle colorway, which just reminds me of good things. Just like if you think about truffle, I don't know, my mouth is salivating already. And this is giving me a very, very soft fabric. The Lolo Crea marled uh, blue fabric is also quite soft, but I think this the um, Phil Colana fabric, it's coming up even softer. Again, I think I'll have to wash and block and then see. However, like even just knitting this up is very, very soft. I would not hesitate, I think, to have this as a hat or as a scarf. And I think I might have enough yarn to also make a hat or a scarf. I think I bought an extra skein of both yarns to be sure. Two more works in progress, but you've seen both of these before. One is my Oversized Seasons Cardigan by Rosetta. This is now looking a little bit more like a cardigan. Last time it looked like a collar around here, my neck. I wore it throughout my episode. You might be able to see a little bit better what's happening. It will have buttons here at the front. Um, it will have sleeves, of course. Uh, this is knitted in half fisherman's rib so it looks like fisherman's rib from the outside so the right side of the fabric um, but it looks quite weird in the inside i'll show you uh, right side so these are kind of ribs and it kind of looks a little bit messy on the inside this is like how it's supposed to look in the sense that i guess for cardigans no one cares about the inside. There's also a full fisherman's rib stitch where it looks the same from both sides of the fabric. So if you want to do a cowl or a scarf or something that you want it to be reversible, you can definitely like use this stitch pattern but make it reversible. The yarn is the, what's the opposite of the star of a project? Like it's the... I guess it's the downside of the project, I don't know. The yarn is Cascade 220 Superwash. So when I bought this, I was quite excited because the yarn Cascade 220, I've heard about it so much from so many different people and I was so interested to try. However, they only had the Superwash quality. And I've used Superwash yarn before for socks a lot of times, for like accessories for my daughter as well, I think. But it has been at least a year since I've not used superwash yarn, maybe more. And so I feel like now I just became that person who doesn't like superwash yarn anymore. <laughs> the feeling of the yarn on your fingers is very slippery. I'm not saying anything mind glowing because that's exactly what superwash is supposed to do, I guess. Like it's just being very slick, it's coated in some chemical that allows you to wash it in the washer with no problem or no shrinkage. And so I guess it's treated yarn. And I think your fingers knows about it. So when you're actually knitting on your project, you do see kind of the sleepiness, slipperiness of the yarn. I do like the final fabric. It is very smooth. It doesn't have the kind of halo or Kind of roughness or rusticness of non-superwash yarns but i don't mind it like I, I do like it like a sleek cardigan i think it's not a problem i think it's not super enjoyable on my fingers while knitting i will still gladly finish this one but i think i'll be more mindful next time that i'm at a store a yarn store i i think will pay more attention to stay away from superwash yarn I think, I don't know. The pattern, it's quite fun though. There's a built-in button bend here at the front. Of course, it goes uh, be like behind your neck and comes from the other side, but it's knitted together with the afro garment. So you don't go 
back afterwards and you don't pick up all like 300 million stitches and knit your button band so i do quite like that idea however it's a little bit fiddly to do like a full row of half fisherman's rib and then do the stitches of the button band because you actually need a smaller size needles for those and so it's not that you're using the same needle for the entire row you actually need to switch to something smaller for the button band stitches so it is a little bit fiddly i don't think this is actually taking less time than at the end just pick up all the stitches and knit the button band i don't know if this was the smartest idea in the sense that i don't think it's saving me any time to have the button band knitted at the same time as the sweater. In the last episode, I think I had short circular needles instead of this double pointed needle here for the button band. However, I was at my local yarn store and they had some double pointed needles. And this size, which is a four and a half millimeters needle is a size of needle that I use in many, many sweaters. Um, so for example the blue one that I showed, the light truffle one that I showed as well, those are all knitted in 4.5 millimeters and so I think for maybe sleeves I could reuse these double pointed needles in the future so I don't know it seems like a reasonable investment. And these are the Knit Pro Zing double pointed needles. Last but not least project in progress, it is my half and half triangles bra. We are now at a very good size. It almost looks like the full square that it will come up to be at the end. I reckon I might be able to finish this over these Christmas breaks. It is a very, very relaxing knit. This is all garter stitch. I don't know if you can tell. I guess you've seen this pattern many times before, I'm sure. And the beauty is that it is so 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 relaxing to knit on and it's perfect if you're having conversations and tea with other people i think this is perfect for kind of christmas holiday type situations and family gatherings so this is what i've knit on for a couple of those family reunions and i made a good amount of progress but it is a massive project it uses six balls of fingering weight yarn so i think it would be like two sweaters for me in terms of meterage or yardage i'm actually using the official proper recommended yarn for this and that's pearl soho linen quill i'm using it in color turmeric yellow and red gray and i do like it I don't think it's like mind-blowing yarn. Many, many people love it and I do love it too. I'm not sure if I would buy more. Like I think I would be very, very happy with another half and half wrap in the future, but I think I would go for another yarn, maybe like a more woolly wool. This has linen, this is called linen quill. So it has linen as well and other kind of mixed fibers and it's not super, super woolly of course so it's meant to be used as like a triangle wrap like this i think actually i don't know how it's meant to be used but i've seen it more this way i think i will love to use it as a black blanket at my desk while working i think it has a perfect size and i do love the pop of color that i chose i think it brightens up the room and the space and if you're working on it but it's very gloomy and foggy outside you're still getting like a pop of sun in your day you've seen this before so i'm not gonna kind of dwell on it too much the modification i've done is that i've used german short rows for the shaping of the shawl i will link a video in the description box if you want to make this modification as well and that would be instead of the wrap and turn method that the free pattern recommends and this concludes the knitting parade so the actual knitted object that i wanted to show you i have just two more acquisitions to show they're not yarns they're accessory is that sure so the first one that i acquired was a magazine that i'm so 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 excited for i already looked 
through it and read all the articles that are included. It is called Wool It and it is a bilingual magazine. This is both in Italian and in English. Everything, so both the articles at the front of the magazine and the patterns at the end are in English and in Italian. The creators of this project are both Italian, but they do love to just rely on English patterns. And so I think that's where this idea came from. So you could read the articles in Italian and the English patterns, or you can use this maybe to learn Italian as well. So maybe if you're an English speaking person, you can try to read the Italian version and see if you get an understanding. I don't know. I really love the article at the front. They're all about a specific place in Italy, uh, which is a region in the mountains. And you can kind of just flip through and pretend that you're in that region. The articles are interviews with some of the people who live there and people who make bread, who make creations with their hands and they maybe want a slower life. It's a breath of fresh air, like it's a breath of fresh mountain air. And I've not tried any of the patterns yet. Uh, you can get the magazine both in this printed format but also as a digital copy. This is their first issue and I'm anxiously waiting for more. Last piece of acquisition, this came home with me together with the tote bag from Petit Knit and it is like a smaller project bag. It has a drawstring here at the top. I do like the fabric quite a lot. It has quite muted tones, which I love. I'm not sure what I'll use these drawstring bag for. I tend to work on bigger projects, like big shawls or sweater projects. And I think this is slightly smaller than what I envisioned. I didn't bother looking at the final measurements of the bag. So I just ordered it and I figured it was gonna be a little bit bigger. It's not. I think it would go very well for like a scarf or a smaller shawl or maybe the initial stages of a sweater. So I will just probably switch over to a bigger bag whenever my project comes to be too big, but I will definitely use this. I also got the pouch. Is this a pouch? Notion bag. Um, it comes with a few things. It comes with stitch markers and I think it also comes with a tape. It also comes with scissors and a few other things. And that was it. I feel like it was a long episode, probably because during this holiday season I had more time to knit. I just wanted to say goodbye for today. Um, I hope you're having a good holiday season. If you're watching this on the beach in the summertime, living life and drinking a fruity cocktail, you go. Like, that's the dream. I would like to be there with you. I will now move to my living room and have a cup of tea, knit some more on my projects and just enjoy the chill time. I'm looking forward to film my Everything I Knit in 2022 video as well. I am honestly curious to see like if my knitting skills have evolved, improved, my color choices have changed, maybe my style has changed since January throughout like the course of the year, I don't know. Love you very much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Bye.